This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Thursday, the 30th day of November in the year 2023. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and here's what we're tracking tonight. The relatives of an 11-year-old Strasby Primary School student who died hours after a gate was slammed against his head by another student at school are crying out for justice. The boy Mark Harry Paul passed away on Monday night at the Georgetown Hospital. He was admitted there in an unconscious state and never regained consciousness. Last evening, family and friends gathered at the boy's home where his father, Roy Harry Paul, told new swords that the family needs justice. I want really want justice to my son because I can't let it down. So because what they are telling me today, the DPP are doing something and um, they are investigating. I don't want no more to investigate. I need justice for my son. Chronicling the events leading up to the death of his son, the older Harry Paul explained that while in the compound of the school on Monday, his son was hit to the head by another student who had snatched a rag from him. He explained that while his son was chasing after the boy, the boy slammed the gate against his head. He like he probably like he grabbed a rock from my son hand, which in my son was my son rag. And the first time and he run. So my son after he and he get by the rug. He do it again and when he run into it, he, he naturally swing the gate to my son. Slam the gate to his forehead and there we get a little gash here. And I hear from some of the children said that my son fall down. But the teacher them are not telling me that part that the, my child get black out. Harry Paul said his wife was informed by the school on the same day that the son was involved in what the school saw as an altercation. Probably like about 8.30. He started to make some funny noise. And we rushed toward him. And we rushed toward him. He start get, he start, the, the, the hands started to fall and the foot started to be stressed out. So we just, we just pull it off. I chose some water for me for just, you know, to fresh it up. And he also said when his son got home, he was unusually quiet. But it wasn't until the family was preparing to retire to bed that they realized something was wrong. The young boy was immediately rushed to the hospital where he passed away. A post-mortem examination was conducted on his remains and revealed that he died as a result of blunt trauma to the head. Harry Paul said his son, who was preparing for the National Grade 6 assessment exams, had a bright future ahead of him. I had big, big plans for my children for next year. I had plans to take them to foreign. That I, I work in the words that forget true for carry them in, forget visa, for we make a turn. I had big plans for them. And he also had big plans because he telling me that whenever he work, um, done right to CXE, he want to go work exam mobile. And he really want to, you know, he's a real respectable kid because, and, and not that too, this, he mother has make a little icicle custard, make a chicken foot, and he's the one that go and sell it every afternoon. And he just make sure he bring him back the money. The incident is being probed by the police. The boy who slammed the gate into the 11-year-old and his parents have since visited the home of the grieving family to offer their sympathy and an apology over the deadly incident. The matter remains on the probe. More news coming up in just a moment. It was the start of GTT Christmas and all through the land. Not a smartphone was silent, all buzzing in hand. The stockings were hung by the modem with care in hopes that GTT prizes would soon be here. They say top up a grand or activate a data plan and just find the letters to GTT Xmas in the land. Plus, pay your bills on time, don't be a Grinch, and you could be a winner of the GTT Mega Million. Oh my lord! I just love to shop in this store. My customers are going to love all these things. So many different things in one place. Oh, so like them. Electronics, toys, stationery, confectionery, exercise equipment, shoes and clothes for men, women and children, school things, costume, jewelry, perfume, makeup. Oh, look the makeup. Giftland <laughs> Office Max, Guyana's favorite department store. your time to win big the massey store's christmas jackpot promotion is back and bigger than before spend five thousand dollars at any massey stores to be the lucky winner of a brand new mg 
ZS, and fantastic weekly store prizes from now until January 31st, 2024. What are you waiting for? Head to your nearest Massey stores to shop now. See our Facebook and Instagram pages for more details. Massey Stores, our family serving your family. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. We're full of flavors. Tell your neighbors about the Buster flavor flavors. Grab a Buster flavor flavor flavors. Yeah, taste Buster. Grab a Buster. Buster flavor taste the savor. Buster. Buster flavor flavors. Buster. Buster flavor flavors. It's back again! The Guyana Public Service Cooperative Credit Union Make My Wish Come Through Christmas promotion is here. What are you wishing for this Christmas? It's another exciting Christmas promotion designed with you, our members, in mind. This Christmas, you can win big household appliances ranging from a fridge, washing machine, gas cooker, dining table, television sets, and much, much more. Here's how you can be a part of our Christmas promotion. You must be a member of the credit union in good standing. You must have an existing loan or must have taken your first loan with the credit union. You must fill out a coupon with your information clearly marked. Coupons for this promotion can be uplifted from our head office at Lot 45 Hatfield Street, Georgetown or from any one of our regional representatives countrywide. Promotion runs from October 30th to December 15th, 2023. What are you wishing for this Christmas? GPS CCU, people helping people. <laughs> Prime Minister Mark Phillips, who is performing the duties of president this afternoon, said that recent messages being shared among communities in the Essequibo region have raised serious questions and concerns regarding the safety and security of the nation, particularly in anticipation of the upcoming referendum concerning the Guyana Venezuela border controversy. The Prime Minister said the messages can potentially spread unnecessary fear and anxiety among citizens. He emphasized the importance of relying on official sources for national security and public safety information, adding that the government is working tirelessly to ensure that the interests of every Guyanese citizen is safeguarded. He also said the nation should remain calm and rational during the period. The Prime Minister said the government appreciates the vigilance and concerns of the citizens, but is also urging all citizens to remain composed and informed through the official channels. Guyana's Minister of Home Affairs, Robson Ben, today said Venezuela's planned referendum on Guyana's Essequibo region, which is expected to take place on Sunday, is a dangerous political stunt by the Nicolas Maduro administration, which he believes is intended to whip up support ahead of that country's general elections next year. The Maduro administration has been facing fierce opposition from 56-year-old Maria Corina Machado, who is the leader of the opposition in Venezuela. She is against a referendum. During a live interview with the president of the National Youth Parliament Association of Antigua and Barbuda this afternoon, the Home Affairs Minister said it would appear that the Venezuelan president is capitalizing on the age-old controversy to increase his popularity ahead of next year's elections. And I think it's more of a political stunt in some ways, but a dangerous stunt in respect of um, undertaking movements in the quality with the voting population in Venezuela to so, give up enthusiasm and nationalistic feelings over the situation which perhaps threatens in their country or something that people will get behind to create issues and hopefully support when it comes to the re-election with Venezuela itself. However, while he is of the opinion that a referendum is a stunt, Minister Ben said Guyana is not taking any chances. 
But that's not to say that uh, they are dangerous to us or that they may not try something which is beyond the political stunt, uh, nationalistic political stunt which would benefit the Chavez movement. Uh, that, that's a very serious generality in which we are repeating it. Mm -hmm. But it has its dangers. He also said he believes another motivating factor behind the referendum is the mineral resources found in the Essequibo region. The Home Affairs Minister noted that Guyana will not surrender its territory and reminded that the issue regarding the controversy remains before the international court. The court will hand down a ruling tomorrow on Guyana's request for provisional measures to block a number of questions related to the border controversy that are listed in the Venezuelan referendum. The state-owned Ghana Sugar Corporation, Guy Suko, has informed management and staffers that their November salaries and week-ending 2nd of December wages will be delayed until further notice, owing to an unavailability of funds. Workers who are paid both monthly and weekly were expecting their salaries and wages to be paid tomorrow. However, this morning a letter from the Human Resource Department informed them of the delay. New source made repeated efforts to contact the chief executive officer at Gaisuko Seisnarine Singh. All calls to his numbers went unanswered. Efforts to contact the HR manager were also futile. However, the president of the Ghana Agricultural and General Workers Union, C. Paul Narine, told news source that while he was informed by the company that it was experiencing some difficulty accessing funds, he still expects that the workers will receive their wages and salaries tomorrow. They talked to me this morning. Um, our employees' pay, payday is tomorrow. The category that we represent. We represent some monthly wages which is supposed to be due today. Um, they talked to me this morning to say that um, they were facing some challenges um, with the availability of funds, um, but they are making every effort um, to see that they could source the money to pay them. But they haven't said to me that, look, they don't have money and they wouldn't pay. The Garu president said it is not the first time that workers are facing a delay in their wages and salary payments. He said there were instances of workers not being paid on time under the previous APMU AFC government. Mr. Narine said he hopes that Guy Suko can find the money to pay the workers, since people working at Guy Suko, many of them, have their expectations. Many people in Guy Suko, even at the senior level, they exist from paycheck to paycheck. Guy Suko has been receiving billions of dollars in funding from the government to support its operational and other costs. So far for this year alone, Guy Suko has received more than $5 billion in government funding, with the latest allocation of $1.5 billion being doled out in the last supplementary budget just a few months ago. Guyana, this is your time to send a strong and decisive message. The government of Guyana is hosting national activities in response to Venezuela's referendum with a night of patriotic reflections at the Guyana National Stadium on Sunday, December 3 from 17 hours. Come in your numbers from every village, every town. Bring your family, your friends and neighbors. Come in your national colors as we unite for Guyana, there will be performances by local artists, sports personalities, and an address by His Excellency President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. Esequibo belongs to Guyana. Come on now, ping pong chairs, choo choos, and isn't mm -hmm. so good? Feed your gravens, chocolate mm -hmm. rich, you'll be graven oh. And more, and more, and more, mm -hmm. here comes the crash. Mm -hmm. Ping pong chairs and choo-choos Eat your you know you want to Ping pong chairs Choo-choo heaven Guyana, get ready! It's the 61st National School Cycling, Swimming and Track and Field Championships from November 26th through December 1, 2023 hosted by the Ministry of Education and the Guyana Teachers Union The moment you've been waiting on is here Come and see top student athletes and teachers from 15 sporting districts compete in intense rivalry Come and enjoy cycling at the National Park Georgetown Swimming at the National Aquatic Center Lillianal November 27th And from November 28th to December 1 
you can witness the track and field action at the National Track and Field Center Lenora, West Coast Demerara. The action starts 10 hours. The National Championships, where stars are born. Sponsored by Rainforest Water, Vitamol, Power Aid, Malta Supreme, Triscuits, Demico Ice Cream, Digital Guyana, and Impressions. Government of Barbados has conferred the island's highest national award, the Order of Freedom, on President Irfan Ali as part of the island's independence anniversary celebrations. According to the citation, President Irfan Ali is being honored in recognition of his strong commitment to enhance cooperation and collaboration, to achieve regional integration, and to foster deeper social and economic partnerships, particularly in relation to food and nutrition security, and for the upliftment of the people of Barbados and the region. The President is currently in Dubai for a climate change conference. Since the announcement of the special honor, he has been receiving congratulations from his government colleagues as well as from officials of the various private sector agencies. President Ali holds CARICOM responsibility for agriculture and has been pushing a food security drive that he hopes will allow the region to reduce its food import bill. Over 1,700 teachers graduated today from the Cyril Potter College of Education, marking the largest graduating batch in the school's history. 477 teachers graduated from the school's early childhood education program, while 841 graduated from the primary education program. 238 graduated from the secondary academic program and another 240 graduated from the secondary pre-vocational program. Of the graduates, 66 graduated from the Trained Teachers Certificate Program, while the remaining 1,730 graduated from the Associate Degree Program. Addressing the graduating class today, Minister of Education Priya Manik Chan said that this year's class represents a significant increase in trained teachers. The increase, she said, augurs well for the local education sector. As at the 31st of October 2023, 13,601 public school teachers existed in the country. As at the 31st of October, 8,941 were trained public school teachers. That's 65.8% of our teachers in our classrooms are trained. Today, we're adding 1,796 teachers and we're raising that to 79% tomorrow in our classrooms, 79% of our teachers will be trained. And tomorrow in our classrooms, 99%. What? Tomorrow. 99% of our teachers standing before desks and benches occupied with Guyana's children will be teachers who are trained or in training. 87% of those who graduated today are women. The education minister said the trained teachers, the majority of whom graduated with credit, were drawn from various parts of the country. Minister Manik Chan challenged the trained teachers to add value to every child that they come into contact with as they advance in their teaching careers. You get to make a difference and you will get children who are bright, bright, bright and past the level they should be at. And you will get children who are three levels below where they should be. You must add value to every single one of them. Whoever comes into your classroom must leave your classroom a significantly better child academically, socially, and in any every other way. Meanwhile, the principal of the Sir Potter College of Education, Noella Joseph, urged the newly trained teachers to be professional in the execution of their mandate to educate and nurture the nation's children. You have completed the first phase of your path to becoming a professional educator which is worthy of commendation and celebration. It is, however, very important that you exhibit the correct attitudes 
and qualities for your learners to emulate. Here is where you demonstrate the professional deportment synonymous with this noble profession. The CPCE principal also used the opportunity to applaud the Education Ministry for advancing the sector through continued investment and hard work. U.S.-based carrier United Airlines has announced that it will begin a scheduled Ghana service from April 2024, even as it is still awaiting word from the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority. In a statement on its website, the airline indicated that it intends to begin a scheduled service between Houston, Texas and Georgetown, Guyana from the 1st of April next year. Initially, the carrier plans to operate four direct flights per week using a Boeing 737 MAX 8 aircraft. According to United, the new Guiana route joins non-stop flights to more than 160 destinations from Houston. The airline already serves a number of other South American and Caribbean destinations, and the new service will add to its growing presence in the region. The airline initially began discussions about serving the Guiana market as far back as 2018. The U.S. Ambassador to Guiana at the time, Perry Holloway, had indicated that the carrier was interested in the Guiana market. Since then, the oil and gas industry in Guyana has taken off. With regular travel between Texas and Guyana, owing to the oil and gas sector, a number of airlines have been eyeing the route. United Airlines is the world's third largest airline when measured by revenue. It is based in Chicago in the U.S. and has a fleet of more than 760 aircraft. Guyana's economy is rapidly transforming, and we're all part of it. Guyoil is at the forefront of this development by providing reliable and efficient energy and supporting community development from the very core. 100% of Guyoil's profit goes back to building schools, roads, and other important infrastructure that connects our cities and towns, providing fuel to domestic, marine, industrial, and aerial transportation. Guy Oil has now repositioned itself as market leader in the petroleum industry, building a better future for all of us. Food Max Supermarket, located on the ground floor of the Giftland Mall, is your one-stop shop for all your grocery needs. We stock a variety of imported frozen meat and food products, fresh produce and pet supplies, freshly made bread, rotisserie chicken and patties are also available daily. Shop in comfort today at Food Max and let our courteous staff assist you in satisfying your shopping needs. Food Max, the fresh food specialist. It's one of your biggest goals getting your own home where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Look who's in the mix now. The new bus, the soda water. Zero calories. Zero sugar. Zero artificial flavors. 100% refreshing. Taste Bust the Soda Water today. Bust the Soda Water, now available for only $120. With your regional and international news tonight, I'm Svetlana Marshall in the region. 21 months after LMCS divers Faisal Kerban, Kazim Ali Jr., Yusuf Henry, and Rishi Nagasar died tragically inside a Perea fuel trading company pipeline. The Commission of Inquiry has concluded its report on the incident, Trinidad and Tobago Guardian said in a report. However, whether the report's contents are made available to the public and the victims' families is up to the government.
Chairman of the COE, German Lynch, announced that he would hand over the 380-page final report to President Christine Kangaloo today. In the Commissioner's final sitting held virtually on Wednesday, Lynch said members sifted through tens of thousands of documents, video material, audio material, correspondence and transcripts of the evidence. Kangaloo will get all these materials on a hard drive. Despite requests for answers, Lynch said his position does not permit him to reveal anything, but assured the answers about who is responsible are in the report. Brazil hopes to join the OPEC Plus group of oil producing countries in January after a technical analysis of the Charter for Cooperation, the country's energy minister said on Thursday, although the nature of Brazil's participation remain unclear. President Luiz Lula da Silva's office confirmed receiving the invite during his trip to Saudi Arabia, but said he had not formally responded. The President's Office and the Mines and Energy Ministry did not say whether Brazil would participate as an OPEC Plus observer or as a full participant in the group's shared production quotas. And finally tonight, international news. The UN climate change clinched an early victory Thursday with delegates adopting a new fund to help poor nations cope with costly climate disasters, according to Reuters. COP28 President Sultan Ahmed Al Jaber said the decision sent a positive signal of momentum to the world and to the work done in Dubai. In establishing the fund on the first day of the two-week COP28 conference, delegates opened the door for governments to announce contributions, and several did, kicking off a series of small pledges that countries hope would build throughout the conference to a substantial sum, including $100 million from the COP28 host United Arab Emirates, at least $51 million from Britain, $17.5 million from the United States, States and $10 million from Japan. Later, the European Union pledged $245.39 million, which included $100 million pledged by Germany. The early breakthrough on the damage fund, which poorer nations had demanded for years, could help grease the wheels for other compromises to be made during the two-week summit. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Svetlana Marshall reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.